Uh, good morning. Uh, we're going to finish up momentum uh, this morning looking at uh, explosions. Uh, it's important to understand what we mean by explosions. Um, so when we say something explode, we, we mean that there's an internal impulse that acts in order to propel uh, the parts of a system into a variety of directions. So something bursts up. So the momentum before the, the, the system break up is going to equal to the momentum after the system breaks up. So if you look at any explosion, ex explosion um, the, the device, it's going to have it's going to have a momentum of zero before, usually, because it's at rest. Some explosive device is going to be moving, but usually it is at rest, so it will have a zero momentum. After you have the explosion, the different parts of the system is going to fly in all different directions. And if you were to sum, algebraic sum of the mass and velocity of the individual parts, of the system, it will also come back to zero or whatever momentum you starts with, you started with. Again, the, system, the total system momentum is conserved. So when, when we have explosions, it's gonna follow the law of momentum conservation, just like we've been talking uh, about before. So the momentum before the explosion is going to equal to the momentum after the explosion. The total system momentum is going to be conserved because they, 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 the system is going to break up into different parts. It's going to have each individual part is going to have a mass and it's going to travel in a specific direction at a specific speed. But if you did the algebraic sum and you had up everything, then you're going to get to the momentum that you started with. So if the, momentum, if the momentum was zero, after you do your algebraic sum, you're going to get zero. Okay? So it's very important to, to grasp that concept. Um, so if we look at, uh, this is a bomb. You have an explosive device inside, and, you know, it, it sits at rest. And once you ignite and it, it blows up, the individual part's going to have a mass and it's going to travel in a specific direction. But if you did the algebraic sum of the whole thing, you know, noting the mass, noting the velocity, you, you'll get back to, if you start, if, if, if this was at rest and the momentum is, at z is zero, you're going to get zero when you had everything together, okay? And we use, we use this, this uh, law and this information in forensic um, situation to determine where we should find the, the different parts of the bomb and then we can put everything together. So this is something that um, the, the law enforcement use uh, to, 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 to properly analyze bomb situations, okay? Um, so a bomb which is originally at rest, if it explodes and shrapnel flies uh, in every which way, each piece with a different mass and speed, the momentum vectors are shown in the after picture. When you do the algebraic sum, if the, the bomb was, uh, as at, was at rest, you'll find that they, when you do the algebraic sum, you'll get zero for the momentum because uh, the total system momentum is conserved. And similarly, if you have a gun, so this cannon represents a gun. So any gun situation, you have an internal explosive uh, system, okay? The initial momentum 
is usually zero because if you have a gun and you know sometimes you're running with a gun or you may be stationary but if you're station if you're stationary if you're stationary with a gun then the momentum is zero or if you have a cannon which is not moving the momentum is zero with this cannon or any gun you have an ex you have explosive device inside the, the gunner cannon you're going to have a bullet or a cannonball okay so this is before the explosion but after the explosion because you have explosive devices inside the cannon when when the explosive device goes off the cannonball is going to go forward and the cannon itself is going to go backwards because the 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 the, the momentum the moment the forward momentum is going to be balanced by the backward momentum the momentum before the explosion is going to equal to the momentum after the explosion okay so the bullet is going to travel forward or the ball is going to travel forward at a tremendous speed the cannon is going to have a recoil it's going to move backwards because the bullet is much smaller than the cannon the bullet will have a much greater speed than the cannon the cannon will recoil back somewhat but not tremendously because um it has a much greater mass than 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 the bullet remember momentum is mass time velocity okay mass time velocity so the forward momentum is equal to the the the, the backward or uh, backward momentum or the recoil okay it's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction okay so that's the situation with bullets all right so let, let's look at a few questions so the first question is uh, you have two pop cans they are at rest on a stand. A firecracker is placed between the cans and lit. The firecracker explodes and, exert, and exerts equal and opposite forces on the two cans. Assuming the system of two cans to be isolated, the post-explosion momentum of the system is, so you have two cans at rest on a, on a stand. Firecracker is placed between the cans and you let it. The firecracker explodes and exerts equal and opposite forces on the two cans. Assuming the system of the, the two cans to be isolated, the post-explosion momentum of the system. So this is an isolated system. It's an explosive device. So the, the, the questions are, um, is independent, sorry, is dependent, <coughs> so, the, the post-explosion momentum is dependent upon the mass and velocity of the two cans. Is that a true statement? Not really. All right, the second one is the post-explosion momentum of the system is dependent upon the velocities of the two cans, but not their mass. Not really. Uh, the post-explosion momentum of the system is typically a very large value. Not necessarily. Uh, the post-explosion momentum of the system can be positive, negative, or zero. Mm. And, you know, not necessarily. Uh, the post-explosion momentum of the system is definitely zero. That That is true because the, 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 the two cans are at rest on a stand, so the pre-explosion momentum is zero. The post-explosion momentum have to be zero, okay? It has to be zero, so that is the definite answer. So the law of momentum conservation states that the momentum before the explosion is equal to the momentum after the explosion. So if it is zero before the explosion, it's going to be zero after the explosion. So that concept is very important. Um, let's do this one. 
um, two ice dancers are at rest on the ice, face, facing each other with their hands together. They push off. They push off. They they push off on each other in order to set each other in motion. The subsequent momentum change of the two skaters will be, all right, so two skaters fa facing each other, they push off each other uh, in order to set, each, uh, to set each other in motion. The subsequent momentum change, that, just the magnitude of the two skaters will be, right? So the, from the law of momentum conservation, if you push off something, the, that thing is going to push off you as well. The, the, the magnitude of the momentum change, mass time velocity change, is going to be the same. Okay? So similarly, the, 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 the two ice skaters are going to push off each other they're going to have the same uh, momentum change. Again, momentum change is mass time velocity change. Okay? So if you push off something, that thing is going to push off you. All right, so another problem. A 62.1 kilogram male ice skater is facing a 42 0.8 kilogram female ice skater. They are at rest on the heist. Uh, they push off each other and move in opposite direction. The female skater move backwards with a speed of 3.11 meters per second, determine the post impulse speed of the male skater. All right, so let's uh, approach this problem. Okay, so again, this is a momentum conservation problem. So let's look at the pre-collision the pre or the pre, right, the pre-collision momentum. So let's look at the pre-collision momentum. All right, so Male ice skater, 62.1 kilogram, facing female ice skater. They are at rest on the highs. So, velocity is zero for both. So if the velocity is zero for both, then the pre-collision momentum, momentum is zero. So the velocity for both, both the skaters are zero. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the post-collision momentum. All right, let's look at the post-collision momentum. And remember, momentum is a vector, so you have to use the correct signs. All right, so assume that the, 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 the male ice skater so they're going to push off each other. Assume that the male ice skater is moving to the right and the female is moving to, to the left. Okay? All right. So they push off each other. The female, uh, the female uh, skater moves backwards with a speed of that. So her, her momentum, so she's moving backwards. So we have, the sign there is minus. Okay? Sign is minus, so it is minus 3.11, and her mass is 42.8. So momentum is mass times velocity. Okay. Then we're going to, so, so this is the momentum of the female ice skater. The momentum of the male ice skater is his mass times his, uh, time is velocity. So it's 62.1 kilograms times his velocity. 
is going to is moving to is moving to the left so his velocity is positive okay because momentum is conserved then momentum is conserved so this okay minus 3.11 times 60 times 42.8 is 60 uh, let's see what is that that is um, that is 133 so that's minus 1 33.1 okay so when you simplify that and then plus 62.1 times V that's the velocity of the main ice skater that is equal to zero. Okay, so 62.1 V is equal to 133.1. Okay, you take it over to the other side, so it becomes positive. Point one. So when you solve for V, V is equal to 2.15, positive. So because it's positive, it gives you the direction that the male ice skater is moving in. So it's moving, he's moving to the left, sorry, to the right, because it's a positive velocity, and the speed is 2.15 meters per second. Okay? 0.1 meters per second. Okay. All right. So we understand that. All right. So let's look at the next... And the next problem. All right, so let's look at um, this problem now. So a 1.5 kilogram cannon is mounted on top of a 20 kilogram cart and loaded with a 52.7 gram ball. The cannon, cart, and ball are moving forward with a speed of 1.27 meters per second. The cannon is ignited and, la and launches the 52.7 kilogram ball forward with a speed of 75 meters per second. Determine the, 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 the post explosion velocity of, of, of the cannon and cart. Okay, so you have a cannon mounted on a cart, it is loaded with a ball, a cannonball and it fires okay the the, the 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 cannon cart and ball are moving forward initially at, at that speed so it's it's a moving uh explosive device it's not at rest the cannon is is ignited and launches a ball forward with a speed of uh 75 uh, meters per second all right, so again, let's look at, so the same approach, the pre-explosion the pre momentum, all right, so, so the, 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 let's look at the system. So you have a 1.5 cannon, you have a 20, sorry, this is 2.0, 2.0, uh, cart and the cannonball has a mass. So the total mass of the system 
and it's moving forward. So say so it's moving to the right. So the velocity is positive. So the, 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 the momentum before the explosion is the mass of the system, which is 1.5 for the cannon, 1.5 kilograms, 2 for the cart. So we're going to add that. We're going to add up all the masses. And then we're going to have the mass of the cannonball. But this is in grams. So to get it in kilograms, you have to divide by 1,000. So that is 0 0.0527. So this is the mass of the system. OK? And we're going to multiply it by the velocity, because that the, the momentum is mass times velocity. So this is the pre-explosion momentum, 1.27 meters per second. So let's simplify that to get the pre-explosion momentum. So let's do the math. So So 1.5, 1 1.5 1 plus 2.0 plus 0 0.0527 is that's equal to 3.5527. All right, let's write it out. So that's equal to three point five so that's the mass three point five five two seven that's the mass and we're gonna multiply it by the velocity which is one point two seven one point two seven Okay, so when we simplify that, all right, let's. So that is three point five five two seven times one point two seven. We get four point five. One. So that gives us four point five one. Okay. So this is the pre-explosion momentum, just the mass times the velocity. Okay. Everything is moving. The post-explosion momentum is should be the same. Okay, it's an isolated system. So the, the pre-explosion momentum is going to equal to the post-explosion momentum. Remember to the signs are important now. So the cannonball is ignited. Sorry, the cannon is ignited and it la launches the ball, and the ball moves forward with the speed of that. So let's so it moves forward. Okay, so the 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 um the 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 momentum of the cannonball is its mass so its mass is point zero five two seven that's the mass and we're gonna multiply it by the velocity which is seventy five meters it's moving forward so it's going to the it's going to the right so it's going to the right so it's positive 
75. Okay. So determine the post explosion velocity of the cannon. Okay. So the post so the 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 so the the post explosion momentum we we have to have the momentum uh, of the cannon, okay? So the mass of the cannon and cart is 3.5. So that's 3.5. And the velocity, we don't know. So that's what we're going to calculate. Okay? We don't know the velocity of the cannon and cart after the, the explosion. But what we know is this quantity is, is going to equal to this. Okay? All right. So let's. Simplify. So point zero five two seven times seventy five. That's equal to three point nine five. So three point nine five. plus 3.5 times V is equal to 4.51. So if we simplify that a little bit, then we get 3.5 V That's equal to 4.51 minus 3.95. So let's do the math for that. So that's 4.51 minus 3.95 and we get 0.56 or 0, let's call it 0 0.56. So to get V, that's the velocity of the cannon on the cart, we have to divide 0.56 by 3.5. Okay, so it is 0.56 divided by 3.5. So V is equal to 0 0.16. meters per second okay so the approach whether it's an explosion or a collision is the same the pre collision or explosion momentum is equal to the post collision or explosion momentum okay momentum is conserved you have to use uh, vector summation to, to analyze these problems because the direction is very important. Okay, so this concludes our uh, momentum lecture. Okay, so I think we 
went over all aspects of momentum uh, and momentum conservation. So 